Paul, I've known Paul for many, many years. Paul's here. I, um, Paul and I have shared a lot of actors. We love our work. Um, he, I admire him. I admire his taste in actors. He's one of my favorite uh, managers. I almost called you patient. I don't know why. <laughs> I just swished every week. <laughs> Where did that come from? Okay. He's one of my um, favorite managers because I love his taste in actors. They're always so special, so talented, and just he has an eye for talent, and he also has an eye, ability to shape and mold and develop um, careers. Um, don't sign with someone just because you need representation. Sign with someone because you really want to be with them, and they really want to sign you. Don't just go, oh boy, I need someone, and they want to sign me, great, I don't care. Mm -hmm. No, you got to really want to be there. You have to really feel like this is the right fit. Generally speaking, I have around 15 clients. I don't have a lot of clients. So I want to make sure the people I work with are people I want to really work with. Because to me, it's so exciting to be with somebody when their career is starting out, and every inch that you gain is really special. Even if it's somebody who is further along in their career, as the next step happens, that's another step in their growth. That's another celebration. And I love being able to do that. Paul, you like the climb. Yeah. I, I like the climb, too. Yeah. The climb is fun. <coughs> and by the way, the climb is one of the more frustrating <laughs> aspects of all of this. Because everybody wants to climb. Okay? Everybody wants to get to ultimately kind of in the same place. And sometimes you think that you're ready for that next step, and it just isn't happening. And it's not because you're not ready. It's just because it hasn't happened yet. Why yes. don't you go into what is the difference between a manager and an agent? Because I think that would be a question that people wonder about. Agent, procure employment, negotiate a contract. My job is everything else. Whatever that may mean, because different actors are in different stages of their careers and need different things. <coughs> um, I, I'm with my clients in terms of trying to make sure that we have the right pictures, that, that they match and they're what they want to portray. Um, if uh, I want to make sure that they're with <laughs> the right acting class, I mean, that's important. You know, I mean, the training to me is. If my clients aren't in class, I don't really want to represent them. Because if you're not training and you're not, unless you're working all the time, that's a whole different story because that's training in itself if you're working all the time. But if you're not, you should be in class. Um, I, I work with them with their demo reel. I'll look at their, the, all of their material and try and figure out what works best, how, what will portray you the best so that we can get, we can present it, hopefully, to get you in for another audition for another job. Um, depending on where someone is on their career, let's say something happens and, oh my gosh, you know, how are we going to utilize this and make the best of it? Maybe we need a publicist. Okay? So I'll set up meetings with publicists. That's and by the way, I go with them. Okay? I, don't, I don't just send them and go, hey, go, go meet with these publicists. I go with them. So for me, it's being there all the time. An agent is not going to be there all the time. If you have a problem, you have a question, you're going to call your manager, not your agent. It's just the way it works. Now, that's not to say that never will an agent do that. There are some agents who get it. They have smaller rosters, and they're happy to do that. I would say 95% of the time, I'm the person calling the agent for my client. Because they'll, they'll respond to me quicker than they will the client. Plus, if you have a problem, I don't want you bringing it up, because that's going to create a problem between you and the agent, or the casting director. And I don't want them to have the, any kind of negative feeling towards my client. I don't care if they don't they have a negative feeling about me. Hey, I'm the manager. I'm trying to do what I can for my client. To them, it's all about bottom line. It's not about long term what is necessarily best in general. I know I'm talking in general terms. It's, it's not best for the client. Okay? And bottom we're, line meaning cash, how much money you're bringing into the agency. Yeah, that's what they look for. And which is why most agencies don't want to take on developmental clients. Because they know initially they're not going to be generating the kind of money they want to generate. It's plain. 
candidates in, and they have to work really hard just to get you in the door. Well, as a manager, I get that. I'm looking long term. I'm looking at your career. I'm not looking at today. The sad ultra low budget movies for $125 a day, I don't know any agent that's going to go after those because it's not going to make them any money. I will because I, I'm not worried about the money. I'm worried about, oh my gosh, this is a, a, a good potential uh, uh, work for your reel. Uh, maybe it's, again, a connection. It's somebody you meet, you're going to meet a director, and you don't know what the next project they're going to do is. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet, and if it means getting into a casting director who maybe the next time is, is casting a, a show, maybe they'll bring you in. So for me, all of that is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not looking at just the bottom line, I'm looking at long-term what's What is right for the career? And I think that is the biggest difference between an agent and a manager. My ideal client is somebody who is willing to do all the work and understands that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Because it's not necessarily going to happen tomorrow, but if you hang in there, if you persevere, it will happen.